Tisha, how are you? I am excited to have this conversation with you. You are the founder of T Mary Innovations LLC. What led you to starting your own business? What led me was the fact that, you know, around 2016, there was a lot of fluctuation as far as employment is concerned. And so I already have a history as far as dealing with credit and trying to help others start their own line of business here in Iowa when it comes down to registration. So for me, I decided why not put my skills to a certain um, standpoint where I'm able to not only help others, but also make money off of it too. Mm -hmm. So that's what led me to start my line of business. But how did you get into uh, helping people with credit and, and starting a business? How, how did you get into that in the first place? Two things. One was school. I went to school for business. So that's how I learned how to primarily start a business, how to work a business internationally, how to work it nationally, marketing. And then when it came down to credit, I've been working with credit since 2007 with FICO scoring. So I already had that educational history with credit. It's just that I kind of um, let it go over the years since the place that I was working at ended up moving to a different state. And I kind of let it go. And then I brought it back up because I felt as though I know all this history of credit and I'm putting it to use as far as my own credit. So why not help others? Mm -hmm. So I found a way to get certified doing all of that. And I also found a way in order to become licensed within my state. So I'm able to work with people here within Iowa, but not only that, being licensed and certified, you're able to help others in different states too. Did you say that you can get certified to help people build the credit? Yes. Yep. Really? You are able I didn't to know certified. that. <laughs> yep. It helps. Because, you know, there's a lot of companies out here that are considered MLMs, where it's mm -hmm. more like a pyramid scheme. And people can't trust specific people when you're dealing with their money or you're dealing with their personal information. And it's like, well, if you are working with this particular company, I don't know if I can trust you. Being certified gives you another chance of earning trust with clientele and then also I being see. certified yeah being certified you are certified not only within your state but you are certified federally oh mm -hmm. so pretty much you can't do that you can't do this anywhere within the united states right oh exactly i love right. that so when you put um business starting helping someone starting the business and then credit so how do the the two go work together exactly i keep it separate my whole uh factor for my line of business is business development and credit consulting so i tend to market differently between the two i have team marie innovations i have that licensed. I have 750 plus credit club. I have that registered within the state of Iowa and I have that license as well. So anybody who comes to me or they see me on my website, cause I include both on my website, but there's one tab that actually keeps it separate on my website. So if they need credit, they can just go to that particular page of my website and sign up. So it's easy to keep the two separated when you're dealing with business business but do you ever meet uh people that's wanting to start a business but having a hard time the fact that the credit is bad and you need to help them with the credit to be able to get loans or anything like that yeah i'm actually helping a few clients right now that are working with the personal side of credit and they're also building their business as well because the reason why they're doing both is that um some clientele have it hard here trying to find employment that meet their background. So why not start something that you like doing, your niche? That's what you're doing. So I help them start their line of business and help them coaching out with their line of business. But they also wanna work on their personal credit because they wanna end up using their personal credit in order to increase loans if they choose to get the loans, if they wanna end up getting a home or even a building for their line of business later on in the future, they can do that. So I definitely have that right now that I'm dealing with. 
I love it. So what is T. Mary Innovations LLC? What are the services that you provide? So T. Mary Innovations is a business development and credit consulting company. What we handle is, of course, business development as building the business from the ground up by giving a step by step platform for you to use. Um, not only that, we handle resume designing for professional um, employment that you are looking for. We also help with business cards and any other marketing materials. And as far as credit, we help with business credit for your line of business and, of course, personal credit. We are also um, certified notaries. Oh, for the business credit, that kind of uh, got, got my attention because I don't meet too many people that talks about credit, uh, business credit <laughs> all the time. They usually just talk about personal credit. So for the business credit, how exactly that works? So and how important it is for a business owner to have a business credit? Business credit is completely different from personal credit. You know, with personal credit, you have to have a, a round shape of a credit profile when you're dealing with short-term and long-term loans when you're dealing with credit cards. When it comes down to business credit, what business credit is looking for is just credit cards or loans per se. Most businesses choose to use their business credit in order to get those lines of credit or to get those loans in order to build off of their business. Of course, there's some out there that when you are trying to get a line of credit through your business, they would like a PG, which is a personal guarantee. And that's when they start using your personal credit for that. So it's always best to have great personal scores and a great personal credit file so that when you are establishing your business credit, that's what they can jump off to personally. And a lot of business want to be able to end up getting business credit just so they can keep everything separate. Taxes is another thing. It's great to keep your taxes separate. So for okay. your business, if they have the line of credit, they're able to use that business credit in order to establish that. They're able to file their taxes separate from their individual taxes like it so pretty much uh with the how do you actually uh i know i'm asking a lot of questions about this but i think the listeners and readers gonna love that how do you actually go about creating a business credit well you have to get your dnb number which is a duns and bradstreet number once you have your business registered then that's the next step to go to because you're done in Bradstreet. They're going to want to know your EIN. They're going to want to know your business name and who it's registered to, who's the registered agent, which would be the owner, of course, of the line of business. Once you get your done in Bradstreet, it takes about four to six months for you to establish a Duns and Bradstreet credit score. That mm. credit score, you have to keep it 80 to 100 in between there. And in order to build that, it's a lot easier to get than just personal credit, honestly. But the way that you could build that up, you have to have three to four trade lines on your business credit profile. And the way to get that is to start off with the first tiers of purchasing business credit. There's um, companies out here like Crown, where you're able to get specific supplies, but it's a membership that you have. Um, you're also working with um, strategic network solutions is another one. Um, and you just purchase certain things. Like for me, what I, when I started, I actually purchased through SNS, which is strategic network solutions and they have monthly services. So I would get my Microsoft office through them and pay $10 a month. That $10 a month is then reported to my business line oh. of credit to Duns and Bradstreet. So I started off with five different um, companies reporting to my business credit profile. And within a matter of four months, I ended up having an 80 business credit through right. DNB. But how do you uh, keep track of that? How do you know? Is it the same like, for example, we have Equifax, Spillian. Is that how you keep track of your business credit as well? You are able to keep track of your business credit scores through a company called NAV which is nav.com. They okay. are the ones that have um, your Equifax business credit score, Experian, and your DNB. So that's how you're able to keep track. And 
I have that all established on my website, which is tmarieinnovations.com. So you're able to go ahead and get that too. Another thing that I also have, I ended up creating a book on building business credit. So it's called um, Building Business Credit for Small Businesses. And it basically breaks down exactly how you can get business credit what you need to do in order to get business credit, how to get your DMB started, anything like that. So from start Ooh. to finish. Dish. I love it. And they can actually purchase the um, purchase that online as well from you? Yes. Oh, is it? Yep. Okay. I like that. And then oh, another word also, if they are unable to do all, because I believe that can be a lot of work, especially uh, trying to establish that if you don't know what you're doing, it will be the best to go to someone like you that's actually can do it for them every single month, keep them updated what's going on. Right, yep. Especially dealing with someone who has personal experience. Exactly. Yep. You also inspire people to create their own career purpose. Can you tell us more about that? My what? You you also inspire people to create their, their career purpose. Uh, can you tell us how do you help them create that, uh, be able to create that career purpose that they want to have? Oh, okay. Yeah. Their career purpose. I tell my clientele when they are building a business, make sure it's something that you enjoy doing. Don't create a business just thinking that you're going to create money or get money the first year you're in business. That's not how that works. From someone who has had a business for six years and counting, I did not see a profit till my second year. And I usually tell that to my clientele, like, don't expect to get your money or getting a profit your first year of business. Because your first year of business, you're starting out. You're still trying mm -hmm. to configure your blueprint. You're still trying to figure out what works best with you or what do you feel works best with your clientele. So I try to hit them with the truth to let them know this is what you're going to expect. Do something that you love doing. And when you have established that, if you feel like adding different things into your niche, do it. Branch out and do it. Place it within your line of business or create a new line of business to do it. But don't just try to rush and try to get things done because I've had some clientele do that too. Because they felt as though if I open up a line of business, I can consider myself a business owner. It's more to it than that. You cannot just open up a line of business and say, hey, yeah, I'm a business owner. No, you have to work to gain that title. People are going to come to you and ask you for your lines of service. And if you're just saying, no, I just own it. I don't have a line of service just yet. Then they're not going to establish that trust with you. They're going to move on exactly. to somebody else. Yeah. So I definitely That's hit true. them with that in order to keep their career motivation going. Do you also provide coaching? Yes. Business coaching is right along with my business development. I help them with that and how to establish, how to get things started, how to keep it moving. You, oh, your, your motto is uh, live and breathe easy. Can you collaborate yes. on this more? Live and breathe easy. I am one that has a history with anxiety and with stress. And years ago, you know, you could feel that internally. It's just not an external problem. Internally, it affects you more. It kills you as you go on. So with that model, it's more like I wanted to ease my mind mentally. Physically, I just felt drained. So that motto... I actually got um, from my great grandpa. He always told me, you need to learn how to ease yourself. You need to learn how to ease yourself from pain. You need to learn how to relax more. Because with my personality, I'm a perfectionist. If I feel as though it doesn't look right to me, it's not going to look right to somebody else. So living, I tend to live each day as if it's my last day. So I try to put and do things on a daily basis to help my line of business or to help my kids or to help my personal um, attributes. But I also tried to learn how to breathe, to keep my anxiety down, to keep my stress level down. Because if I get that too high, then everything just comes at me 
just full force and then I just start to panic. So that's where live and breathe easy comes from. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you went through a financial struggle and wanted to give up, but your children wouldn't let you. Can you tell us more about that experience and how did you overcome it? Yeah. So again, back in um, 2016, I... When I mentioned financial struggle, it was literally a financial struggle. I was living on unemployment, literally from unemployment check to unemployment check. And there was times where it's like, okay, should I pay the electric bill this month or wait? Because we also need food to eat as well. Granted, I'm able to go to other homes or whatever and have a meal. Like my best friend would prepare something. So we would go over there or my uh fiance's family would end up doing something so i would do that food pantries would be another one so i would have the funds to pay utilities to keep my home up and running and i i hated going through that because i was so dependent upon corporate life and relying on that money that it was just what am i going to do how can I do it? And that's why I established T Marie Innovations so that I'm able to fall on something if corporate doesn't work out. I have something to hold on to. And my kids were my motivation in that because seeing them, I don't want them getting older and growing up and going through the same thing that I went through as a financial struggle. I want them to be able to go into their life, their adulthood, either being an entrepreneur or having their head on straight if they were to be involved with corporate life at all. And just to know that it's not all fun and games when it comes down to corporate life and it's not permanent. So I want them to understand that and take that logically. I, I love the fact that um, you think about them with your business. It's not just... Um... It's not just you. And I can relate into that because I started Womel because I wanted to be home with my son. And that was one of my first purpose of starting it. And he becomes a part of Wormel. So literally he knows everything about Wormel. He knows every client. He knows everyone I'm interviewing. <laughs> He's like that person is like, knows everything. Uh, a few months ago, he said to me, mom, I understand you support women, but I think that women need more than just that. I think women yes. need to know how to cook better. So I think when I take over the company, I'm going to create a program that can teach women how to cook the best possible way they can cook. And I'm like, right. I'm not, I'm not dead yet. Duh, don't make plan yet. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's something that's good. We need to use them. Uh, my son is my purpose. Woman exists because of my son, probably without my son, woman wouldn't exist at all. Maybe I would have been doing something completely different so yeah. our kids are a big motivation to us to actually want to do more and more and more and more every single day and i love the fact that you use that uh, to motivate you to do better in this world instead of saying oh my goodness this kids drive me crazy <laughs> yes because <laughs> we have to remember they are either one going to be within our footsteps or two they're going to find a way to go within their own lane and create something better. I tell my kids, especially my oldest, my oldest daughter, don't try to be me, be better than me. That's what I want them to do. Either you take over my company, you take over your father's company, or you create something of your own that you want to do. As long as you never get up, never give up and be yourself, but be a better version of yourself too. I love it. So you also give back. Can you tell us about the fundraising event you hosted to raise money for lung cancer? Yes, yes. That one, lung cancer actually runs in my bloodline. It's not good. I've lost several family members due to lung cancer. And one day I was just researching and just thought like, you know, I want to be able to give back and do something. So Literally, um, a decade ago, I did something where um, I like getting my nails done. I know a lot of women like getting their nails done. And primarily African-American women 
are high in stats when it comes down to lung cancer itself. Wow. So during that time, I'm like, okay, well, they have a nail polish that represents surviving lung cancer or even going through lung cancer. So I wanted to do that event. I got a hold of a woman that handles um, events here that promote um, survivors of lung cancer. And I got with my nail technician at that time. And we decided to, okay, let's go ahead and shut down the nail company as a whole for, you know, this event and take on individuals who's going through battling or have been a survivor or anything like that as far as lung cancer. So that's what I did for there. And it was a one day event and it was refreshing to see so many women and even men too, even men too, that are supporters of their wives, sisters, mothers, anything like that, come in and be like, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and do this, paint one nail. So I'm representing who I'm with, because this is Aww. who I'm with. And then of course, you know, they would donate money to the cause. And I felt very grateful that my nail technician would do that in order to support not only what you know my family was going through but what other families would go through too do you plan on doing this event again i would like to i would have to get in touch with whoever's running it again and then of course just trying to find another place they have that event because the place that i did held hold the event um they're no longer in business so i have to okay. find a different one and like i said this was like a a decade ago. So you have been in business since 2016 and um, yes. have been helping and giving back to your community. Do you have any future goals for yourself in the company? Yes. Future goals that I have is to actually host seminars. I want to be able to do some webinars, like seminars. I want to be able to teach others how to build a business and what they can do as far as uh, their line of business, finding their niche, how to come up with a business name, color schemes, um, and then webinars and other seminars, being able to teach others how to establish credit personally. And then of course, working with business credit too. So I do have that in the works. I'm still working on it. And of course, I'm um, trying to find a place in order to host these seminars and exactly what to do. And that's on my goal sheet for this year. If it's not <laughs> going to happen this year, it's definitely going to happen next year. It really all depends because, you know, we got the virus going on and then other upcoming viruses that's going on. So it's kind of hard to have something done in person. But even having a webinar, you want to be able to choose um the correct dates and correct times where people are going to be able to show and be a part of that. Absolutely. And how can people get your services for both? Uh, if they need a credit line, uh, help with getting business credit, personal credit, or your coaching, or even help starting a business. Yeah, they can go right on my website. Everything's on my website, www.tmarieinnovations.com. I can be um, contact their social media. I have a Facebook page for T Marie Innovations. Um, you're also able to contact me on Instagram, which is Trinisha Marie. And um, I also have a Facebook group that handles with personal credit, which is 750 Plus Credit Club LLC. And when someone get your uh, get help from you for the credit, do you have a max of help? You say that okay, within six months they will hit. 700 and something or is it like it's depend on the person it really depends on the person you can get to your actual goal of a credit score if you work the way that i'm coaching you to do it you know i don't expect you to gain my services and then when i tell you hey don't do this don't do that especially when you're in the middle trying to dispute items and then you turn around and do it anyways that's kind of messing up what you are doing <laughs> because now your, you know, creditors and the credit bureaus are noticing, oh my God, well, you're applying for credit, but you're also disputing this stuff too. It's not, you're messing yourself up. So 
definitely when people take my services, that's something that I let them know. Please do not apply for certain things when you are dealing with this over here. So pretty much they have to wait until they finish the dispute itself before they can do anything else. Exactly. When they feel comfortable enough to apply for something, if they feel as though their credit score is where they want it to be, then yes, go ahead and do what you feel. But I usually say, give me six months and you'll see a change within your credit score because, you know, different things change on a monthly basis. And of course, new changes with credit scoring and calculations. But you want to be able to have that patience, that waiting period in order to uh, apply for a home loan or even getting a, a credit card or maybe even a new car. So patience is definitely a thing that clientele needs to grasp. Um, I think one, one of the things also when you get into someone's credit, it's almost impossible to take it out. Have you ever dealt with bankruptcy? Bankruptcy? Yes. Yes. I had um, a client deal with bankruptcy beforehand. Now, all of that deals with judges, legalities when you're dealing with that. There are some like the clientele that I worked with had a bankruptcy that should have been removed off the credit file about a year and a half ago. So, you know, on my end, it's best for me to send out a letter to the credit bureaus, notifying the bureaus like, hey, this has been completed and done within the past 14, 16 months, and it has yet to be removed. And it's been this long because, you know, bankruptcies, you're dealing with that for 10 years. Yes. There's no way around that loop. You have to keep that for 10 years because in a bankruptcy, what you're doing is basically consolidating all your debt and legally in the creditor's eyes, you filed for bankruptcy, which means you did not have the funds to pay for everything that you have underneath, underneath this bankruptcy. You make payments on the bankruptcy that the judge will end up seeing or whoever is handling that case for you. So they have a plan opted for you in order to complete your bankruptcy run. So in order to have that established, that's what you have to do on your end. And then after you're done, it's up to the state or um, whoever is holding your bankruptcy to have it reported to the bureaus for the bureaus to remove it. But what, about, what happened to, I know there's a two of them, right? There's bankruptcy, there's the seven and the 11, right? Yes, there's seven and 11, depending upon which chapter you go to. One is actually better than the other in particular eyes, which is uh, chapter seven. And on my YouTube channel, which is Team Marie Innovations, I actually break down between bankruptcy chapter seven and bankruptcy chapter 11 on which awesome. one is better. But it's always best to consult with a legal, um, a lawyer in regards to all of that before you do anything. So yeah. what is your advice uh, to entrepreneurs that are just starting out? My advice, make an outline of whatever you're going to do. When you first start a line of business, think about it like, should I have a website? Should I have social media? Should I have both? Should I get a business number? Should I rely on my cell phone? What color scheme should I go through? Or should I even have a color palette? What type of clientele age range am I focused on? What type of people am I focused on? Create an outline so that you're able to focus primarily on that outline and work that. Give your first year of business first year for you to configure how you want to run it. Then when you figure that out, then you're able to run it the just of how you want to run that. I like doing that. I like helping my clientele deal with that. That's something how I started off with and how I wanted to run my business effectively. Every year I'm always revamping and adding a new product in order to keep your business up and going. Wow, that's the best advice ever. <laughs> I don't have anything to add into it. I thank you so much for taking the time to have this conversation with me. And I thank the kids for, for being with us as well. And then uh, yes. for supporting you and keeping you moving forward. Because you know what? They are our purpose. And then there's no there's no issue by having 
them a part of our, what we are doing. Actually, it's good for them to have them because they get to see mama is working, mommy is doing this, mommy is doing that. So can right. I? So that's how I see it. And we need to, we need their support and we need to keep supporting them. And thank you for all you are doing, supporting your community and also helping a business woman and people in general starting business because small business, we go, we went down a lot with COVID-19 yeah. and then uh, we, can, we can use the help. Yes, definitely. And thank you for having me on your show.